All right, everybody, welcome to a time when cathode ray tubes displays ruled the universe to a time when WCW as champions of the world welcome to Monday Night Retro Tech. <laughs> All right, guys, enough cheese now. <laughs> I hope everybody's ready for a good time. I'm Steve, and tonight I'm going to be taking you down and showing you how I shop for CRTs today online. Let me go ahead and kill the entrance music here. Okay. So, yeah, we're looking at places I shop for CRTs. Thank you, everybody, for showing up tonight. I've been hunting around the internet, and we got a couple of ways that I normally shop for CRTs. Now, unfortunately, over the last, oh, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what's it been, like three or four months, it's been kind of difficult to find CRTs, at least uh, in my area. So I'm going to show you. I've actually, obviously, I bought the 2030, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. You saw that unboxing video, I hope. But... Uh, I did buy that from eBay, so that's where we're going to start tonight. And honestly, I already bought another one from eBay and sent a big box behind here. Uh, it actually arrived this weekend. I haven't even opened it yet, but it's a 14-inch PVM. And again, thanks, everybody, for showing up so far. Feel free to chat it up. Um, I'll come back to the chat at the end of the show, and we will definitely do some discussions. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions about stuff that's been going on or any questions you may have about your stuff uh, after we look at these listings for CRTs and we'll just uh, kind of play it from there. Um, I've also got a couple things that I want to make for like corrections on the last video that came out earlier today. Uh, there's just a couple small things on there that I need to kind of clear up that I had made a, you know, a couple of boo-boos on. But anyway, so again, I'm just here at eBay. And the first thing I'm going to do is, of course, search for Sony PVMs. And I kind of tell you, like, what my thinking is on this, because I've been looking, and unfortunately, lately, there's not been really any um, really high-quality PVMs. You know, there's been some BVMs still, and some bigger PVMs, but nothing, nothing too great. Like, uh, I haven't found an L5 online in a very long time. Like, if you look up 20L5 or you probably won't find one. Like this is our friend, Mr. Um, this is our friend here, Mr. Nick. <laughs> it's, he's selling these. He's listing that with 2005 in the title, but it's actually a 20M4. And that's pretty much the way it is. You're not really going to find a 2005 right now on eBay at all, unfortunately. So, or even a 1405. So just a look at that right off the bat. And, well, there we go. Nope, see, we're just getting other ones that are not 14 L5s. Nope, L2, 20F1. So a lot of them, again, are still being listed by Nick. Now, it's really hot out here, so i got to put on something to keep my sweat out of my face. But, <laughs> again, these are all just by him. So, again, let's just start with Sony PVMs, okay? And we'll get in here and look. I like to do this. I like to just type in PVM first, and then I'll go best match. But I, also, I basically like to do newly listed right now because I've been looking a lot. And look, here's so here's kind of what we're running into right now. Now, so for example, we've got this one. I mean, this is not a terrible price for a 14L2, I don't think. It's, I mean... You know, $190 plus 48 shipping. That's not terrible. And uh, I've not had, by count, I'm, I've not had a uh, upscaler kill or damage a PVM before. But I've not, I've not really used an upscaler into a PVM. Um, I just pretty much use the straight stuff. So anyway, we got um, these ones here. I mean, these buy it now is most of the time they're not the best deals. So what I've been doing is I've been going on auctions, actually, 
and I've had a lot of a lot more you know success uh, with auctions. And again, there's not too much going on right now, but so okay. So here's not this isn't this is a pretty new one. I've not seen this one yet. Oh gosh, this is so old though. So this is the stuff we're left left with looking at now. It does do RGB though. It probably does not do component. Uh, VTR, S video, and everything else, but it doesn't do. Oh yeah, um, I don't know. I never, I've never used a Frame Meister. I always just went for the PVM. That's actually like one of the only scalers I've ever used was the one I did the video on. All right, so I mean, I, I don't think like this is a very good, a good deal. I mean, it's missing the net, the badge. Okay, so that one's kind of no good. And then 14M4 is a good buy. It's, it's, a, it's a higher line count than a 14M2, okay? So it's got, I think, 800, 800 lines on that monitor. Now, this 14L2 is a 600-line monitor, but it is one of the last uh, monitors that's been made. And, um, of course, my uh, phone keeps going off right now. Uh, but I would go for a 14M4. If you could find a good one. I was bidding on one this week, but it went for about $250 shipped, which is a little bit more than I was willing to pay for one right now. And um, so I, I would uh, just keep in mind, you know, it depends on how much work needs to be done. Now, this one I did see. This is a good deal. Look at this one. So this is an idea. This only has 14 hours left on it, especially if you're in, like, Illinois and you're willing to drive to these places. Plus, this guy's undercharging for shipping, too. So that's a good, that's a pretty good deal. Um, so like this one, I mean, I don't know where this bid will end up. But if, you're, if you can get this, for example, it looks like it's working fine. Uh, name badge is there. It looks to be in pretty good shape. So like this, you know, I mean, if you could get this for 300 bucks, as it is, it'll probably be great for you. I mean, this is a good, really good, good, good model. It won't have any issues with sync at all. And um, so like... This one is, I mean, it is on my watch list. I'm not logged in right now, but I, I am watching this one because, again, if it's real cheap, I mean, I'd even bid on it. But that's a good one I saw. Um, and it's just, unfortunately, you just got to keep a daily eye out. And this is another one I'm watching. No, two, uh, 290, I mean, so here's what I'm going to start talking. Like the, so, like, this one obviously has huge, super problems with it. Now, this is what I've been looking at because I think maybe... Maybe I could fix it. I don't know, but it's missing the front plate. And I mean, just that picture right there is just whack. Look at that. Ugh. Man, it looks like it's got a bad power supply and a whole ton of issues. But it's pretty cheap. But see, I wouldn't recommend this unless you know what you're doing. I don't think any, I mean, nobody's bidding on it yet. It's still got a day and a half left. And I think that's, I mean, that's worth something if you want a project. Something like that would be a good deal. Um, a lot of these are going to be nine inches. You got to watch these two because some of these 14 N fives do support RGB and some of them do not. So if we look at this one, let's see. Uh, yep. So this one does support RGB. Now these ones are extremely limited. So you, if you're on a budget, uh, these 14 N two N series, 14 N series is really, uh, they're really a, a, a pretty good monitor to start with if you're trying to get something. You can usually catch these on a good deal. I've seen them go for under 200 bucks shipped, uh, ending in auctions. So, and so you got to just keep an eye out. Now, what I will say, I keep getting uh, questions about 1351s are good. Um, yeah, Keith, I, I still haven't RGB to modded one. Um, the see, I did get so I've got a 14L2 right now. But it's actually missing a tube. It's uh, I bought it, it. The tube was broken, so it didn't have a tube in it. And I uh, I bought it <laughs> for parts because I've got a 14L1 that only does S video, and that's one of my upcoming projects is going to be uh, changing out the tube from the L1 into the 14L2, which is the RGB and is a real nice monitor frame. And um, I've just got to double check and make sure those are compatible. But they're pretty much the same model, except the L1 only does S-Video. But again, these are good. 
they don't have a huge high line count. They pro I think they've got, you know, usually 500 lines, sometimes 350. I'm not for certain on that, but you do have to watch these N5s because some of them do have RGB and some of them do not. So always make sure you check for that when you, because uh, they look the same on the front. Um, I, I just, it, the market's really only got like 14 inches, a lot of them. Now this one's an RGB monitor. Somebody's put a bid on. It's got 20 hours left and it's, um, it's not a bad deal. I mean, it's, again, I don't think that this is, this is the greatest. Uh, ugh. It's missing the name badge. Uh, it's a pretty old one. I guarantee you it doesn't have a service menu. So unless you just are desperate, I would stay away. Unless you lived in Ohio, then that would be worth it. Now, see, these are really good, but this is a 1343. This is uh, that's about as much as you can get for one of these that's not been serviced, I feel like, because this one's got some rough dings in the top of it. So this, this is an example of a monitor that probably won't sell at this price in the condition it's in. This one's so old that it does not have a service menu. It does have a speaker. No service menu, though. It has to be controlled with potentiometers inside the monitor. And um, most of the time, even though it has a speaker, yep, there's no audio support on there for RGB on this monitor. Uh, I'm not... 100% whether this one does component. It pr probably does. It I can't guarantee that though. But again, so keep that in mind when you're looking at these monitor models. You got to just be patient sometimes. Sometimes these will show up. Uh, so we just keep going. This one would be a good buy at like $150 shipped, um, I feel like. And then maybe $200. I mean, you're, you're pushing it there. Uh, because I'll talk about at the end why I kind of value these things the way I do for pricing and kind of what I have to pay myself. Because, again, this is just me. I mean, I'm not, I don't get any special deals on these. I do have some connections that you guys have seen before, but they've dried up for the most part. Uh, I've reached out to them, and they haven't responded with anything lately as far as monitors. Um, man, that's, that makes me jealous. I, I, got, I got one $29.50, and I sold it to that museum, as everybody knows. But they paid a lot of money for it, so there's other people that are buying these monitors. Oh, gave them away, yeah. That's what the museum told me when I, when I took them their monitors. They said, we used to have a bunch of these, and we just gave them away because they didn't want them 10 years ago. Um, so anyway, you know, just keep looking down here. Hang on, guys. Sorry for the time out here. <laughs> and uh, so, okay. All right, so this is a 14N5. Let's see, this one might not have, uh, yeah, we still got a decent market on some of these in the US. That's the only thing. See, this is a good example right here. So this one's priced the same. It's a 14N5U, just like the other one, but it does not have RGB. So, you know, if you wanted a project like Keith, uh, Keith mentioned you could RGB mod this and add it because they're behind that board slot right there. There are spots where you can populate the board and like cut holes in that plastic, but it's not it's not the easiest thing, but it is doable. But again, just keep an eye on that because this one should you shouldn't pay really more than probably a hundred bucks right now for one that's just RG, that's not got RGB, unless. Um, now that could be before shipping, unless if it's in really good shape and you need the parts. Like I've got one that I'm going to use the tube for. All right, let's look at a couple more. I wanted to see. That's what. But you got to always keep an eye out for that because there's different models. They have the same model number, and uh, sometimes they don't have any different. Now this is kind of like the maximum price on a 20M2 that's, I mean, not been calibrated. Oh, that's. 20L1, this is not probably RGB. It's too much money. We looked at that one. Eight inches, I'm not interested in looking at right now. And you can see that's pretty much all we're looking at right now. We don't have a whole lot. Um, let's just see what happens with Trinitrons. Oh, man, there's thousands of those. So people are 
still this and other Trinitrons. I won't go into those right now. Let's see if there's any JVC T, I think it's TM H CRT, something like that. So these are these can be decent. You just again have to always check. All right, so this one's missing a power button. I've seen a lot of these that are kind of in rough shape. So again, always check condition on here. And this is, see, these are the ones that you want to stay away from because they actually don't have the hole drilled in them where you can put an option card in the back. So you, again, just be mindful. These model numbers are similar to ones that do have cards and do have RGB and component support. This is not one of those. So you don't want to accidentally buy one that you can't get RGB on and pay all this money for it. Um, let's try this one because this has got two available and again no RGB so the way I feel about it if it's not RGB you might as well just get a um, unless you want to do a project or need it for parts you might as well just get a regular CRT so I don't think that's a good option all right let's see what else but there are two of those but Again, unless you're just looking for parts, you should probably stay away from those. Um, not too many more. And then this one, well, that's actually in the UK. So if anybody's in the UK and this looks like a good price for you, uh, that might not be bad. Let's see if this one has a RGB support for anybody that happens to be overseas. And this one does. Okay, so greetings, Alan. Thanks for coming and joining the channel. Uh, look at this one. This is a good one. If you're now, this is not a good one for me in the United States, but if you're overseas in uh, England, Great Britain, this is one you should look at. It's a 17 incher, which is slightly bigger than a 14 incher. Obviously, it's made in 2003, so that's a good a good sign. It comes with this SDI card, but the guy Jam makes cards for this monitor that you can put in that's RGB and those cards they're about $90 now you could probably sell that SDI card back on eBay for $50 maybe but because uh, it's it's otherwise useless and so I wouldn't um, I, you know don't worry about too much about that SDI card but it is good that's the kind of ports you want to look for on these JVCs and there's also Panasonic's that are similar to that so let's let's look for Panasonic and um, maybe if somebody in England can yeah let's look at Ikigami. I almost forgot about them. Uh, so there's a nine inch. There's a nine inch, nine inch. So a lot of these have just become nine inch monitors. So let's put monitor black and white. None of those are that great. Uh, yeah, so JVC's, I think also like this, uh, um, the CRT inside of them, they're not actually made, you know, those Shadow Mask TV CRTs were only made by a couple of tube producers. And so the um, Ikigami I had that I restored, of course, it was from 1987, but it actually had a tube in it that was a... Uh, yeah, that's Linux Bot 3000. That's the one that makes them. I've act, he, he made the scaler that I made that video today on, or I released that video today on, as well as um, that. So the Ikigamis, they're going to have between 500 and up to like 1,000. It just depends on the model. That old one that I had from 1987 has 500 TV lines. So they're right on par there. Now, they are shadow masks, so the, tur the tube does curve both ways, um, horizontally and vertically on the tube it's a little bit different than oh look at these these look nice look at this how about this oh yeah so this these are these look cool so we got no bids on this man six hours where is this oh see that's it so sometimes you'll run into this where uh, i mean this if you look right now if you're in minnesota holy moly these are Ikigamis, and I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think these Ikigamis, I'm not sure. Uh, this light red tent, I mean, that's probably, these things should be, 
uh, calibrated. It just probably needs a recap because it's old. But man, $125 for one of them if you live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Only local pickup, though. Dang, that's a pretty good deal. Someone could get that. Yeah, some people do like that tur tube curvature. I wish I could buy it. I'm not going to drive there, though. That's, a, that's like a really long way away from here. Um, even though I would if there was like 20 of them. So, yeah, these are just some foreign stuff. It might be two. I don't know. I think it's maybe the guy selling the one on the top. Only so this guy is interesting. Now, this guy used to, um, his products are extremely expensive, okay? But he's been around for a very long time. He's got an 800 line, he re restores them. I've never talked to him, I've considered calling him a couple times just to see because I mean, his stuff's really like I say, it's extremely expensive, but it's guaranteed. And this, for example, you know, this is a good, good monitor, but again, this is really expensive. Uh, sometimes he'll have some stuff, though, that looks cool that comes up. So this is a seller that I keep an eye on, David Riddle. I don't, I've never bought anything from him, but if you want to keep it and you're in California, yeah, he did. He did a little, but he's always been really expensive. I mean, he's always been the most expensive person on here that ever, like, even before the retro scene came on, he was by far more expensive. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely, see, the problem is, it's like everything, they're just running out of stock. And uh, so these guys, rather than just selling it to for no price, they just, the less, like the more they sell out, they just bump the price up 20 more bucks. But still, I mean, at least I don't, I can't, I cannot fault people if they really want one, they've got the money and then they, you're, you know, you'd be better off buying one that's fully fixed than taking a chance on one and then having to buy two or something if you have no idea how to fix it or no way to, um, it's always nice having a guaranteed product. So that's pretty much what we were finding for Ikigami. I was going to look up one more, which is this Panasonic, because they are very similar to those JVC monitors. And so there's, here's one, okay, but let's see what we've got for inputs. Yeah, see, that's the problem. A lot of these, I'll tell you the history behind a lot of these Panasonic and, um, Panasonic and JVC monitors like this, a lot of them were used for security monitor purposes. So you always, always have to check the tubes on these. They often have screen burn in them because they are left on and they have the worst screen burn, like a big line down the middle or a, you know four squares. So you've always got to check those tubes for that because they were used for security uh, see, it says surveillance monitor, but somebody just threw gaming on there. So that's not a good deal. I mean, it's not a terrible deal if you were if you live near. The, oh, free shipping. I mean, see, so this again is something if you're like really wanting some kind of a high end monitor. Eh. It's, a, it's a iffy. It's not a terrible price though. So let's see what this one is. Because this one's thirteen eighty four, really old. And again. We're just looking at video in and S video. So that's that's what you're gonna run into with a lot of these. I actually turned down like one just like this. That was like a 20 inch. Yeah, I'm Keith, you're definitely right. Uh, I, I don't own any um, Stella Rolla. I do not own any arcade monitors like outside of my arcade monitor. It's, I mean, my, my stand up Neo Geo. I've got an arcade monitor in there, and uh, I'm still about to do a, uh, sometime I'm gonna do a full restoration on that. I've got all the parts here. It's just I gotta tear it apart to, to do it. It's a pretty big job, and I've just been waiting. You wanna look up barcodes? That's actually a pretty good idea. I, so see, so you guys are giving me some good ideas. Well, I gotta put. But yeah, I bought my, I bought my MVS, it's a four slot eh, for 500 bucks about a mm, year and a half ago. And it didn't, I'm in uh, Nashville area, Nashville, Tennessee. And it didn't, uh, I actually bought it from a local arcade owner. He got me a pretty good deal. He, I mean, 500 bucks, it's fully working. It didn't really have to be restored, but 
it's definitely got some wear, like cigarette burns on the control panel overlay and, um, you know, chipping on the, the wood. I'm not really seeing any Barco CRTs. Nice working 7-inch Barco. I went and looked at a Barco one time, but it was only 30, you know, over 30 kilohertz. Um, and it, and I actually went and tested it. It was at an old video production, or no, it was a marketing firm, and they used the Barco for color stuff. It would have been a nice monitor, but uh, it definitely didn't work. Awesome, Stella, and yeah, it's cool. Alex, Knoxville's a couple hours away, and uh, Kentucky. I mean, I live in actually Gallatin, which is, I went to school in Western Kentucky for a couple years. And then I went to a uh, graduated from Middle Tennessee and uh, Middle Tennessee State University in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. All right, so I mean the Barco thing, it's kind of hit or miss. There's not too many of those left, and you know a lot of those are still flat screens. I don't. Let's see if we can find a CRT. We'll try one more time. Now this is something I've always wanted to mess with. Would be a projector, but not for twenty two fifty. So I've got my guys that are the recycling firm. They're looking out for these for me. They actually had one one time, but man, it was like, it was so big. It was, it was easily the size of a pallet, and I wouldn't have had anything I could have done with it, unfortunately. Oh, these are some funky things. Look at this. So there's some to tubes. Look at these tubes here. Those look like they're something like, yeah, I don't know. Green CRT projection tube. So here's another Barco CRT video projector as is. It probably doesn't work. I wouldn't jump into just trying to restore one of these uh, without some, there's going to be some major problems and parts that um, you can run into with those projectors. Man, I know, Alex, you used to be able to go, dude, I, I, used, I can honestly remember in 2017 and 18 right then, you used just back then. You used to be able to go on, and I watched a 20L5 uh, go for auction for six hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, nice condition, six fifty shipped co included, and I thought that was a crazy. I was like, that's too expensive. And now, <laughs> I mean, and now I, I don't even know. I mean, there's not even any on here. And the last time they were on here, they were twelve hundred bucks. So, all right. So that's it for that. Let's get off eBay for a minute. I want to show you where else to look. All right. So. I don't know how many of you guys ever go on Reddit. Now, you don't have to be registered on Reddit to look at this stuff, uh, but a lot of you probably are on this Reddit CRT gaming community. And if you are, go here and check out their listings. It's right at the top. You click out the listings. Oh, yeah, I know, man. I can't imagine giving away. <laughs> well, we all have done things, okay? It's like, you know, I mean, you can't... It, we, sometimes... There was a time where I had a bunch of CRTs and I thought I was nuts. I thought I would never be able to get rid of them. When I first started buying a lot of them, like I got a load once of like 15, uh, 20 inch. And, you know, I was like, am I nuts? I mean, I, I, I got a deal because I bought so many. And it, it, you know, since I bought so many, I got a deal. But again, you're wondering, am I going to be able to hold all these? And thankfully, you know, the things have picked up. So let's go down here to the U.S. market. Now, if you're in another country, you can check this. Like Canada, there's a couple listings. Now, people put all kinds of CRTs on here, though. But I wanted to show you a couple here. I went and looked at uh, some stuff can be skipped. Now, check this out. If you are in, um, let's move this over a little bit. If you're in Pittsburgh, man, look at this. It's free, free, free. Now, it was damaged in shipping, but, dude, if you're in Pittsburgh, you should go get this. Free parts. Someone wants to get it if it's still there because uh, you could tear it down for parts and sell the parts to me <laughs> for a little bit of money, or you might be able to get it repaired. Uh, consumer CRTs. Uh, dot mask CRT. So there's a lot of still junky CRTs. I mean, here's somebody trying to sell a 1351Q for $300. That's more than I sold my two for that I fully recapped. I mean, 
I don't feel bad for doing that because I feel like that's what uh, so that's what I'm talk about in a minute. We're look, done looking at these monitors. This is what I wanted to show everybody. Um, yeah, I've modded. I've got two. Uh, Stella, I've got two videos that I've done where I've modded RGB modded two different CRTs that were consumers. One was a Sony Trinitron 27 incher, and it only had composite and uh, S video output to begin with. So I was able to add RGB to it. And then it was the same thing with a Samsung, like a 20 inch. Um, that one I actually painted red. I recapped both of them and uh, everything. So uh, my son just got here. And uh, if you guys want to hang out for like, I don't know, like a minute, I'll be right back. I'm sorry. I've just got to go let him in the house and uh, I'll run right back. But look at this. Uh, if you can, I'm going to pull this ad over here because I want you to take a look at this one and see if this is something that you might be interested in looking at. It's a Mitsubishi. I'll be right back. All right, man. Sorry, sorry for bailing on everybody like that. Um, so yeah, this is this is in Chicago, okay? Chicago area, and it's um, these I've been looking at, man. These are thirty-five inch Mitsubishi. Uh, again, these are. I mean, they're not. They're they're. It says here that it does. Oh my gosh! I don't know how much he actually wants for them, but. MSRP, that's just funny. I don't know why anybody would list that. You put the MSRP of any of these things when they came out, and it's going to be like $10,000 if you want to. But look at the weight on this thing, 266 pounds. Good grief. That's the biggest I've ever seen. Um, so anyway, if anybody's interested, uh, it looks like he's mostly wanting to trade. DV, JVC, maybe you can go buy that JVC and trade Buy a JVC and trade him. Um, I've, never, I've never had the chance to work on one of these JVCs. Never seen one, or I mean, not JVC, I'm sorry, Mitsubishi's. So that's one. Um, my, my wife, you know, she's just like anybody else who's married to a kind of a nerd, kind of just expects me to do stupid stuff and bring home all kinds of junk. She's used to it by now. Now, Sam, where are oh, you in Scandinavia? Yeah, we just found a pretty good monitor that was listed on eBay and, um, uh, in England, but I know it's really hard overseas. Uh, I will tell you that unfortunately there are people that are even in the United States that are buying them and shipping them from overseas and back here because they come available less often. So sometimes they get underpriced. And um, the good thing is though, you guys did have like some really awesome, what are those B and O TVs? I'd love to get one of those. What is it, Bangs and Olfen or whatever those things are? I'd love to see one of those, SCART. Uh, they have some really cool looking TVs uh, or CRTs. So that's, uh, that's yeah, I'd like to see one of those. Let's see. <laughs> I like this one. I got the P780, but it smells like a barn. So, yeah, there's, I mean, you can always look on here. Uh, like, okay, this is pretty good. Oh, man, power on. So, like... Oh, see, so this guy is in Roanoke, Virginia, and he will ship. He's got a couple, like a 14L2, powers on, has burn-in. So here's an idea, right? 
So this is what I'm doing. I just told you guys I was doing this. So, I mean, this is a good deal, right? If you can, if this, so unfortunately, I don't know if for sure that these are compatible because I haven't done all my research. I've been waiting on this project, but I've got a 1401 that works perfectly and a 1402 with no um, CRT. So the idea is to take the CRT tube from the 1401 and swap it with the 1402, and then you'll have a good monitor. And right here, if you lived in this area, that's $150 for those two. And well, you'd have to pay 60 bucks probably to ship them both. So that's not a terrible idea. Not the worst. Here's one in Ocean City. Uh, looks like it needs a little repair. Maybe not. Maybe they just don't know how to fix it, set it up. I'm not sure. But this is pretty decent. BTD90, 120 bucks, New Jersey. So they are out there. Like here's a D series. Somebody tried to list here. So lots. I mean, there's still there's a good amount, and in West Coast, there's still some luck. Here's a 1405. We found one, but man, it's a mess. It looks like damn, that's terrible. Wow. Oh gosh, I bet that thing is just screwed up. Yeah, Stephen, go get it, man. <laughs> oh you used to live you don't live there anymore sorry so uh okay so this sony pvm 1953 won't turn on it probably has a bad power supply and uh, here's some more that have been taken down there's a lot of course on the listings in California. So if you're on the West Coast, um, let me know. Okay, so, or well, don't let me know, but you can look on here. So uh, there's a couple other sites. That's the listing site there on CRT Reddit. You can honestly just Google CRT Reddit and it'll take you right there. Uh, so this is the other site. I've bought one PVM off here. This is a government auction site for Nashville, okay? And it's just, ugh, it's just all kinds of random garbage most of the time. Like light fixtures, used paint. Like, I don't know who would pay for used paint, but I bought a lot of stuff off here. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, um, I don't know if it's a bad run of them for those 1953s. Sometimes, usually, it's when the 53, it could be something as small as uh, like just the ground loop inside the monitor not being perfect like you could have something this a green tally light can come on for anything now the red tally light usually means is it's an alarm um but look if you can't get it to power on for uh if you can't get your monitor to power on or if you're having problems with just not powering on there's probably something wrong in the power supply like 85 percent of the time at least yeah <laughs> Dude, a lot of this stuff will sell for nothing. Like they, I mean, like they'll have like the worst. Look at this, the worst vehicles. Like a 2009 cop Impala. Look at this. Like I mean, this isn't actually that bad. Look at this. You could turn this into a nice creepy. Uh, oh man, that would be awesome. Just put a nice, the traveling CRT. They have a 50,000 pounds of scrap metal to dump off. Probably pay for the van. So yeah, this this site has all kinds of stuff. We'll see what they they don't really have anything right now that's good. Cell phones and electronics bulk lots junk but you got to see if you if you live near a big city or any anywhere see if they they have them uh, some kind of auction site just google your city these are sometimes around different places um you know different just different areas will have different services that do this and then um the last thing we'll look at is we're going to try to find some stuff on my local craigslist and you can never tell. One time I bought a, uh, well, here's a, see, there's not much on this either. It's, stuff's been dry. Um, that's ridiculous. Look at this. This is right down the street from me, but a nine inch KV, I mean, the thing looks like trash. I mean, it's not trash, you know, but it looks terrible. And there are people are trying to sell this for $75. And they give you a, ooh, a bunch of statistics, though. <laughs> 
I mean, I'd go get this for, for like 10 bucks, but I would not pay 75 bucks for that ever, really. Lots and lots of details on it. Boy, let's see. Uh, now, one time I did find a... I typed PMV accidentally, and somebody accidentally listed there. Like, somebody didn't know what they had listed it wrong, but, yeah, nothing's found there. Uh, nothing. Now, there are, you know, um, now this was something I did find that I thought was nice. Okay. This is like, like, so in my area, this is actually pretty close to me, and if I didn't already have four consumer CRTs that... I like and that I don't need any extra. This is a nice one. Look at this one. Um, comes with this really sweet setup. 30 bucks. Like I'd consider going and getting this. This is obviously just from the way it looks, a Trinitron. Uh, it might, it might even be 29 to 30 something inches. Uh, and it has the nice built in thing. I mean, you can throw some, throw some stuff in there. Looks sweet. Like, see, I'd rather get this than like a new flat screen. Isn't that something? But I don't need any of those right now. So if you're in Tennessee, though, and you're looking for one of those, then you can check it out. So let's just try something else and see if we can find anything else pull up. Nope. Uh, right. And... No... So, unfortunately, in my area, there's not been much on Craigslist at all lately. Nothing. So, obviously, that's just rubbish. So, again, that, but that's kind of what I do. Obviously, the most effective thing, um, the most effective shopping area right now is eBay still, at least for me, because you're still at least guaranteed shipping and you're guaranteed that it's, it can come and it won't be destroyed. If it is, you got a, a refund. Um, so, you know, the so here's what I've been doing, okay? So I've been buying them, keeping my eye on these 14-inch ones for right now till I get another load because I figure anybody can ship a 14-inch. Uh, 20 inches, you know, we know how those are. I mean, I got really lucky on that 2030. I'm still keeping my eye out for 20-inch monitors, you know, on eBay, obviously. I found that one, but that was going to be ending soon for 100 something dollars. Uh, but it'll probably go, obviously, more than that. But so here's the deal. If I can get it for like 180 to 200 bucks, usually, I buy it, and then I do the $150 service to it where I recap the power board and then recap the uh, geometry area of the board, reset the geometry and calibrate you know color geometry and that's then clean it and that's part of that 150 part so then i just have to go list that for sale then to patrons and that's what i've been doing so if um you know if you're looking for one that's kind of like right now i'm taking orders from patrons only unfortunately but uh because it's just it's it's too dry right now so if but if you are on Patreon and looking for a monitor still, there's a couple people. I do have one, the 14 inch right now I've got spoken for, but if uh, that's how I do it. I mean, it's the only, so the only thing I'm doing is making um, the very little I charge for service, which is not, not really that much. It's mostly parts and then it's actually my time. It takes me about three, two to three hours to complete an entire restoration of a uh, CRT now. All right, so again, nothing there, but that's kind of the um, idea for that. And then, so the last thing, um, there's also some other things. Yeah, t t I've not been good about checking like Venmo or other apps. So if there's offer up, I don't know. I mean, it's worth a shot. You never know. So you just got to keep looking. But keep it on eBay. Don't get desperate, though. Don't get desperate and make a big mistake. It can pay off to wait. Yeah, Mike. All right, let's get into, uh, you guys want to do some Q&A. Let's, let's, let's start doing that. So we'll just quit looking at the search things for a minute and uh, rearrange the screen, and we can do some Q&A stuff. Um, 
And, uh, yeah, well, I mean, don't worry about if you're, if you're paying to get it shipped, don't worry about it. I, I know it stinks, but if somebody, um, is taking your money and, uh, you buy it from, that's why I say it's not too bad to buy off eBay still, because if you do, you can get guarantee that you're not going to, um, and if it's something is damaged during shipping, you're not going to lose your money. You're going to get a refund at least. I mean, it sucks that they're breaking and when people don't ship them right, but you can always uh, talk to the seller, say, look, I just bought this. I've done that before. I always try to send a message to the sellers if I buy one and it's not, and I know they've never shipped one or I, I can tell they don't sell them a lot. So there is a couple people that are recyclers that you can check out on eBay uh, to see if they have them and they know how to ship them. But if they don't know how to ship them, you can always reach out to them. And, uh, you know, that's what I say. I like, even if they ignore you, you can always say, well, hey, man, I tried to reach out to you ahead of time. Uh, I tried to, to share with you some tips on how to ship it, and it still arrived broken. And you used PayPal, so you just go through, you know, let eBay deal with it. You don't even have to mess with it. That's the only good, that's the really good thing about that. Uh, it does suck when they die, you broken in shipping, but you got to just take that risk sometimes. I mean, I'm doing it. So I, I don't fault anybody. It's not your fault if, again, the seller doesn't pack it right. So anybody, okay, Mike asked, good resources for general troubleshooting on uh, issues with CRTs. So the um, I've been kind of researching some more, and most of the time it's like all the other uh, old electronics from the 80s, 90s that now we're running into trouble with. And this is the trouble with my new next couple projects it's always the same thing it's the electrolytic capacitors so i did some studying on electrolytic capacitors and they've been around for a very long time i mean uh ones made made almost like 100 years ago now so it's something that's an old technology and what it actually is is it's just rolled up aluminum like paper that's soaked in actual fish oil so like real fish oil that's why it stinks when it when a cat ruptures and it hits like something on the board and all of a sudden um, it gets hot and it smells bad, it smells funky, that's because it's actually fish oil that's like 30 years old that's leaking out of the cap and, uh, and onto your stuff. And so it's always capacitors, it seems like. And then after that, uh, you'll, you'll have other problems. Sometimes it might just be like a fuse. Um, but like 85 to 90% of the time, it's capacitors. So I always say that like check the capacitors. You don't have, if you're having problems with it turning on and stuff, you probably need to replace the capacitors in the power supply area, which is generally right around a bunch of heat sinks, has very big, uh, has very big uh, transformers near it that aren't the flyback transformer. That's what you gotta look for on that first off. The next thing is cold solder joints. That happens a lot, and that'll cause trouble. Or solder breaks where uh, you just have to check again for that. You can use a, a multimeter to do continuity, or you can just sit there and literally uh, look under like a, a, a magnifying glass and a flashlight and just follow the traces on a lot of them and see if they're still connected. Um, it breaks my heart to see broken CRTs too. I have had a lot break that people, I mean, I did have a few break that people shipped to me too. It just happens. And um, what really uh, what really stinks is it's harder to find, not just these, I, I never see 70s, like you're saying, Sweet Home Alabama, I, I never see anything from 70s or 80s uh, very often anymore, which is kind of sad. And even the really early 90s, like I think there's even these really nice Sony Profil CRTs, and I just never see them. They're never around. Now, I did drive around town today before the video to see if I could even see any CRTs on the street because uh, I've been seeing them more and more in the street around me because I talked to my um, local disposal people and they're just picking them up like trash. They don't, they're, they're, not, they're not worried about it right now, unfortunately. So they're just taking them to the dump and not get rid of them right, the right way where I live locally. But uh, they've built a lot of them coming out in the last two months. People just put them out on the, tr on the sidewalk. And uh, honestly, I might show this sometime because you can literally rip apart a CRT and scrap it all the way to the tube, 
but it's it's like it's not worth the work money unless that was like your hobby into scrapping we might do it sometime inductors no um that's a good um that's a good thing i i have no i have not had that but see i've got a list i've got list or i've got a lot of like I've got five PVMs that are bigger over here that have serious issues. That's not the capacitor. So there is like a 15% time where it comes into other parts and it just gets harder with the higher end models and the newer models that are out um, because they have more components. The boards, the printed circuit boards, a lot of them are double sided. So there's thousands of components on a single uh, deflection board for a PVM. Yeah, uh, thank enlight thanks, Enlightened One. That's one of the things that uh, I see. So I, I, I will tell you the truth. I've not, I rarely write any kind of a script for some of my videos. Um, I do have a general script, but I tend to go from my, my thought pattern. And sometimes I'll say the wrong things on occasionally. Like, for example, in the lat transcoder video, it, that's not scalar. It's not scaling anything. It's not, you know, it's not changing the resolution in any way from what I can tell. It's just changing it from one, you know, input type to another or another out, you know, video output type. Uh, so that's one of the things that I did wrong. The other thing was I was talking about the power supplies and it was the noise that was the problem with them, not uh, so much the amperage difference. So the good thing is, is Jam left a com comment on the video. He saw it, the guy who makes those parts. He saw it and he put it. Uh, he put down there that he's. That's one of the things he improved was the power supply compatibility. But he did say that the reason he has troubles with power supplies is because he's in um, New Zealand, and so he doesn't have the same kind of power. I don't believe that we do here. And then you go into Europe and you got another different power. So that's why he doesn't include power supplies with his uh, unit because he's shipping them all over the world and he doesn't. And it's got to be hard to test power supplies uh, when you're not in the same area, even though you can maybe keep the same things up. All right, guys, so um, does anybody else have any questions um, about anything from that or um, repairs? No? Go some... Get, get off here and watch some real wrestling now. <laughs> All right. I'll check it out, Hippo Eater. No, I Link, I have never seen a Bangs and Olf in TV. I know somebody also asked if um, it is getting very hard to get good PVMs. I mean, that's why I'm just pretty much buying uh, lower-end broken ones and trying to fix them up to perfect condition and then just get them back to people that want them. I've never seen a B&O TV in person. Um, we'll try to get, I'd love to see what, I'd love to see uh, one of them in person. I have not worked on an XM29 either, uh, but I do know some people who have worked on them. So if you have questions about XM29 problems, you can send them to me and I can forward them on to, to people for you. I do have um, the guy who I basically refer to for questions on there. He has tons of um, XM29s. <laughs> like he hoards them, I think. And he, uh, which is, you know, whatever. That's cool. Uh, but he has been working on a lot of them. And he does tell me that there's a consistent problem with purity in like one of the corners. It says every unit, it's a really hard time to try to get opinion on broken plastics. It depends on the crack of the bezel, Keith. Um, I, I, I think that uh, repairing plastic is a good option. Absolutely, if you can get in there um, and take your time with it, you should sand it down you know clean the area sand it down and then maybe add some good epoxy and you know let it sit and then sand it again and paint it i'm sure it could be you know you can make it look as good as anything and it, and since the parts are getting harder to find 
I'd say do that rather than um, paying a bunch of money to just get another bezel. That's a lot of work to change a bezel on most of those monitors, tons of it. And somebody did just ask about oscilloscopes. Uh, Alex, yeah, I have to buy an oscilloscope first. So um, I don't own one, and I've actually been talking to Retro uh, RGB about it. So uh, he's recommended one to me. And I haven't um, looked it up yet, but it's it costs like 350 bucks, and it's supposed to be the same one that like everybody in the retro gaming community uses, and it's all um, it's all one unit. It's a pretty popular unit, so hopefully that'll come up. I think that uh, what I'm looking for now is to work on. Here, I'll show you. This is a project that I got coming up soon. I've ordered uh, I've ordered the capacitors for it. Now this one has surface mount capacitors. <laughs> I bought this. I found this. That's another place we didn't look. Okay, I forgot. But Facebook Marketplace. Sometimes you find something on there. This is uh, that's what I'm gonna be working on next though. Cause this thing, dude. So this thing, right, like, like, let me tell you a story about this. I bought it last week from a lady whose dad was like a computer nut back in the 80s. He's passed away, but she, she got it and uh, listed it for 150 bucks. Now, it comes with a keyboard and a nice mouse. And uh, so I got there, power's on, couldn't get it to really boot all the way. And so I took it home, powered it on, it booted up once and then froze and then... <laughs> And then I turned it on again, and it had, and then the, it got a, a, a line collapse. So the analog board needs to be completely rebuilt on it. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild that. It's got a power supply in it that has to be rebuilt completely. It's got a, um, the main motherboard needs to be rebuilt, and that has surface mount capacitors. So that's going to be a little different. But those caps have already been ordered, and uh, they, they, uh, They've been shipped, so yeah, I had to pay hundred. I paid a hundred bucks for it. I mean, it was supposed to be working, so I thought that was a good deal if it was working. But then, like I said, I took it home and it just it stopped. It had a line collapse right in the middle, so it's good. It's the good thing is it's a good repair project. So um, that's that's one of the next things I'm working on is this. I'm just waiting for those parts to come in. All right. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if we can get down. Now, so Brandon said 14-inch Mitsubishi and RGB mod it, man. That would be crazy. And that, like, I was actually playing some light gun games on this 36-inch uh, D-Series. It's awesome on there. Like, uh, every light gun game is great on that for sure. So um, let me get back here and see about SDI CRT Vetroscope. That's cool. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, SDI inputs. I see Keith. I'm sorry. I'm just reading through some comments here. I'll check. I'll talk with you later about that. I've never heard of Advent. I don't think. Uh, gosh, if you're trying to get flybacks, you can order flybacks, um, but you have to just try to find the part from the part number using it on eBay or online. You get lucky. There's companies that make flybacks still for arcade monitors. But unfortunately, a lot of them are made in China, and um, a lot of them don't like fail right away. Like, so if you can keep your old flyback working, you want to. Oh yeah, I don't even have any 3D glasses or the master. I said something I never had as a dang f master system yet. I'd like to play with one, but I just <laughs> that's what she said, right? I never, uh, I never get to see them. Uh, yeah, like Alex, so here's what I was going to do. Oh, you're not a big fan of the Hacko heated tweezers? Because that's what I saw uh, was the Hacko heated tweezers. And and this is just like, so this so this Mac is the only thing I have right now that needs surface mount replacement. So for the time being, I'm, I might just buy like a $50, $60 one to test. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd never, the first time I'd seen it, like I asked for some... Uh, reputable ones and uh, somebody had 
sent me a link of that, and I'd never seen it. Yeah, I don't know. I, they looked crazy. I just couldn't see them working that good. And I, see, the problem with using the tweezers is you could damage a trace still by, you know, putting it down and, and hitting one side before the other. So I'm probably not going to buy those tweezers like you say, Keith. I think I'm going to give it with the heat uh, station, but I'm going to order that tonight, actually. And uh, I'm going to try the heat, just the heat gun on it. Thankfully, there's only like 10 surface mount caps on it, so it won't be very much. Everything else is electrolytic, like in the analog video board. And since it's got line collapse, it probably means the caps are bad, and um, there might even be something else wrong with it. So that would be fun. Oh, boy. Are you looking at a Sony PVM2950Q on eBay? I don't know. Let's look at it real quick. Now, did anybody notice that our good friend, Mr. Oh, 1850? Who's got that? Who owns this? Beautiful monitor. No bleeding. Picture is amazing. Look. Uh, who's selling this? Who's selling this? Please, please tell me it's not our friend. Oh, gosh. Let me show you. Let me show you. So, um, whoops, don't want that. Let me let me see if I can get get my. Well, I can't seem to find the other. All right, sorry guys. So, yeah, it's our friend. I don't know where my other window went, but um, I must have moved it out of the picture too far. Let me see if I can find it real quick. So. All right, so anyway, yeah, I'm looking at it right here. If anybody else wants to look at um, this, it's a buyer friend, Nick, Video Audio Studios. So here's what I'd tell you to do. If you can go see it in person, are you, do you, are you looking at this thing because you live near this? Do you live near this? You're going to go um, buy this in person. Uh, who's looking at it? Achilles. Are you our friend? Yeah, I know. Is he go are you going to, um, I'm, oh, you're on the East Coast? Well, I wouldn't make any deal with him outside of eBay. You try to do that if you do like uh, make an offer. He'll try to, you know, sell it to you for like 100 bucks less outside of eBay, even though it costs him more in fees to pay for it. If you're going to buy it, just pay the two grand and have him ship it to you. And um, it's in good shape. There's a very good, I mean, look, these things are hardy, Okay. So it looks solid as it gets to me. You can get a, you can get a um, remote for like uh, certain, certain Sony CRTs that were standard televisions for the time will work with this 2950. But I'd pay the two grand if you're really looking to buy this thing. Pay the two grand and... and uh, Swing it. If it, I mean, it looks to be like it's in good shape. But again, it's expensive, and it's coming from our boy, Nick, at Video Audio Studios. But I can't get my, um, I, I seem to have lost my, my other scene here. So I wanted to talk about one thing I did find on Nick's, uh, that's, it's a good, I mean, that's a very good PVM. That's the one that's, I mean, it's 600 TV lines, but again, it's, uh, it can be a little finicky with sync, so you do have to have C-Sync for that monitor, but it does RGB. And I don't, I don't think that one does 480p. I don't think it does. I think it just does 480i and 240p. The only reason that one's so good is its size and it's got the cool cube black look. And then it also has the, uh, it has a stereo audio amp built into it that's awesome. And you can use a remote. If you get one, you can use it up and down volume, change the inputs. You can change colors and stuff on your remote. It's awesome, but you gotta have the remote and you gotta have the you know monitor. So it's it's a great it's it's two thousand dollars. Look, people, that's. Do you want to know how much the? I mean, since there's they here the thirty six people in here, the reason I drove, you know, three days to go and deliver the CRT monitor to the Philadelphia Museum of Art 
which was the same monitor you're talking about, was because the museum was willing to pay um, thousands of dollars, twice as much as that for it. And uh, so if you really want a PVM and you really want the big one, that's a good one. And it's going to hold that value. It's not going to lose that value if it's in good shape and makes it to you. It's not going to lose that value. 2000 bucks. I mean, unless there's a whole CRT chain crash again, but see, the problem is everybody's obviously who wants these things is grabbing them up now and they're never going to make them again because of the environmental laws against it. Uh, they're considered waste, so they're not going to let us make them anymore, I don't think. Um, so, yeah, that one. But Nick at Video Audio Studios, dude, he has a 3230, okay? I wish, I don't know why I didn't pull this thing or loose this. Let's. Let me try to find it, and I'll tell you about it um, and how much he wants for it. Oh, he came down off of it a little bit. Golly, okay. So, <laughs> okay, no, this one. So if you're looking at the 2950, and uh, then I don't know, you know, Nick, or is it him? Let me make sure. Yeah, same guy. He has a 3230 that's more, but it is a 3230, 2,500 bucks, but a 3230. So that's even bigger because that'll be over 30 inches probably. The actual screen size on the 2950 is close to like 27 and a half. It's not actually even 28 inches because um, I measured it when I had it. Man, Keith, I know, man, I don't, well, I, that's one problem. I can't, I've wanted to talk to him, but it, it kind of, you know, another thing is he doesn't like to be on camera, uh, you know, whatever, he's, I, I always do Nishikon whenever possible anymore, just because I don't want to mess with it. I don't want anybody complaining about the quality of them, and they're not expensive. You can find right replacement ones. Uh, the only ones that are expensive are the big, weird capacitors. Yeah, I know, man. I don't think CRTs are ever going to be remade, unfortunately, unless it's like some crazy third world country that gets involved. It would have to be somebody that, because again, like here in the United States, the, it's literally EPA banned. Like CRTs are considered hazardous waste, right? It's like the whole process of putting lead into glass and like mercury or anything else like that, they won't let us, they wouldn't let us do that in the United States, you'd never get like the permits because they'd be too worried about you leaking lead into the ground and regret groundwater. If that happened once, it would just be once is all it needs to happen. So unfortunately, um, yeah, the, those 2950s, man, they're getting hard to get, really hard to get, like I said. So there's a 3230, but he also had a D32, I think. So that D or the Sony PVM 2950, $2,500 plus 150 shipping. 2650. All right. Let's see how much the BVM. I think it's a 32 that he's got. And no, maybe somebody bought it. I can't believe if somebody bought it, man. He literally had a like, was it that? No, it was a 24, maybe. Let me try that one. Okay, it was the 24. So look at this. It's not. Is there some place in China still making CRTs? I don't know. I thought maybe they stopped, but you never can tell with China. So they could be. Um, we, we, I would never know for sure unless they brought or, you know, advertised it. So Nick has a Sony 24-inch BVM D24, right? It's advertised with a new tube. So if you trusted him on that, that he's put a new tube in it, it probably does because it has over 80,000 hours on it. And... The price is $3,650. $3,650. I mean, that's like a down payment on a damn. It's like a down payment on like a, I don't know. I mean, you could buy a car for that, $3,600. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. He says everything's tested. It's ridic ridiculous. 
Um, yeah, like, so he just, he went and auctioned off a bunch of them. I've heard horror stories about some of the quality of some of the 20L5s that he sold. You know, you might be right about that, Keith. They are doing some other stuff. Um, they still do make, like, I think they were making even VCRs and stuff for the, for a real cheap version of them for the last, you know, till like last year. So, um, I don't know. Does anybody have any other, um, any other thing else they want to talk about tonight? I mean, we kind of walked through all the buying. Anybody have questions about like the buying process or, you know, I mean, um, again, that's what I do. And I take your time. I know it sucks, but sometimes, I mean, even here, I, I, if something comes up that's local or somebody's like listing something and it's, it, the auction ends at a weird time, uh, you keep an eye on it and just sometimes you get lucky. Um, unfortunately, let's look at, uh, you know, I, I list, I missed a couple, uh, Hey, I missed a couple of, uh, my dog's over here growling at something. I missed a couple of sales online this week that were 14 inches that were like 1343s and 1341s that wound up going for like 120 bucks that were supposedly problem free. So I would have gotten those if I could have, but I missed the auction. BVM20F1U with RGB cards. What's the matte screen thing? And the controller. Well, you need that. So the BVM D20F1U or F1. I mean, I'd be surprised if you found that monitor these days for under $1,400. If you do, you probably should buy it. If it's got all that stuff with it, if it's got all the accessories like that, and the the tube doesn't have a lot, a lot of uh, uh, those things. I, I will link. Um, yeah, you can remove the mat, and it's four by three. Those mats are stupid. So here's the thing I did find out though. Um, don't don't take a chance, obviously, on an A series. Uh, not only, even if you find one for cheap, you got to remember some of those BVMs, especially the A series, they had like firmware problems even. So some of the monitors won't power on. And the reason is because the firmware is not updated. Like there's something going on with those that, uh, the A series BVMs that they, they do have firmware problems. And I've even heard of firmware issues uh, for BVMs, D series too, but not not nearly like A series. That's not very common with a D. Well, David, my dream, I guess to, I'd want to have something that I could be good to work on. Um, I mean, I, I would, I wouldn't mind. I'd like to work on one of those larger BVMs. I mean, that would be nice. Um, I, I try not to like get myself too hyped up on a single one of these. I, I've always wanted an XM29, even though I don't really know why. Maybe it's because like this awesome, uh, I thought Phone Dork did a good job of the videos for those. They look awesome in those videos. But I always wanted a uh, XM29, and those are really hard to find. Yeah, Al Cabroni. If you can't find a RGB monitor, then here's the best two things to do. Go find a nice, try to find a nice condition CRT that has component and, and use and try the converter first. Like the one I, I know that, I mean, I'm look, I'm not plugging this guy's stuff because I bought it. It, it I didn't, I, I mean, he, he helped me a little bit. He hooked me up with a little bit of a discount and stuff, but not, I, I paid for the scaler. And um, so like, that's the easiest. I mean, you don't have to do any mod. Then if you are skilled in doing mods um, and what you need to do then is try to find a monitor or a TV that has been RGB modded before, like the, the certain Sony that I did, and that way you can already have somebody, uh, there's a lot of documentation on it and you know what 
like resistors you need to put in the line for each color um, and for all the other stuff. That way you don't have to worry about trying to figure that out on your own because I believe that's what I'm going to have to get an oscilloscope for is if people want to start RGB modding just any random uh, TV. I got a monochrome monitor, Alex, that I did some work on. Uh, RGB mod, but RGB modding, again, consumer TVs, if you don't have the right resistors, you can have a lot of trouble if you don't know what you're putting. I mean, it's not the actual, the job itself is not difficult. Okay, so Larson, it sounds like you, which one is it? A 1953 MD. So you, have you tried calibrating it already? Like through the service menu? And, um, cause that's what it probably needs. It needs a calibration. And look, if you do have a calibration or you do a calibration, okay. So that's the first thing to try. On that monitor, turn it on, press menu, pull up the menu, and then you pull up the sub menu, okay, by pushing, um, and trying to do all this from memory without even seeing an, a, a monitor. I think it's, uh, okay, you haven't turned it on since you bought it. Turn it back on, and what you do is first let it run for 30 minutes. Let me see what these damn buttons are. It's degauss and I think enter. So, yeah, here's the. Here's this, the tubeless uh, 14L2 I bought. <laughs> so, um, press that, get your sub menu up, work through, work through the, uh, I've actually, yeah, I've got a 14 l tube before. I don't know if it's for 14L2. So anyway, get into the sub menu, Larson, and use like uh, what it depends what region you're in, but 50 or 60 hertz. Get on there, and then um, the first like 17 settings all control geometry. So pull up the 240 test suite. I've done uh, 1953. Well, you'll be fine. Do I've done 1953 uh, uh, calibration videos. So just watch one of those videos, and I walk through how to go through the sub menu. Try that first. If you calibrate it. And you turn it off, and uh, yeah, this one's easy too. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah, <laughs> do that. Try that first. Now, look, I will tell you just one thing. After you calibrate it, um, if you come back the next day and turn the machine back on and the calibration goes back to wonky, don't worry. That just means your, cal your caps are bad, like all your, your geometry caps. So you just need to do a cap kit. Um, if you want to, you, you could take that board out and send it in and get it capture placed, but you'll have to replace the capacitors. If you turn the monitor, if you calibrate it and then you turn it off and you turn it back on and it still, um, it still shows, you know, later on calibration problems again, that means the caps have, are not holding the right, uh, voltage anymore. And, you know, they're just letting all kinds of wrong voltage readings go through and you're losing calibration. Yeah, HD CRTs have lag, and that's pretty much why I stay away from them. I have some people that have been asking me about HD CRTs and flat screen CRTs, and I don't, um, unless you really want one, I don't really uh, mess, uh, mess around with them unless you want them specifically for any reason. So, guys, I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to be, or again, I did order, a PVM, so I'll probably do, it's a 1350, which I had never gotten. It's nearly identical to a 1351Q, which was the last one I restored. So I'm going to be doing that this week, restoring that, as well as this um, uh, little Macintosh SE. I hope that works out well, because that's, that's going to be fun. But that's kind of what's going on this week. I, now, those videos won't be ready till probably the week after or so, but I do already have a, couple, a video shot that will come out later this week. And... Um, but if you guys have any other questions and uh, want to do a, you know, want, let me know now. I'm, I'll probably have to get off here kind of soon. But um, I can't think of anything else going on, really. Uh, the Ikigami monitor has been doing really well. It still works fine.
Um, do you guys want to see other kind of uh, machines? Or you just want me to kind of stick with CRTs for the most part. And you want to see... Um, <laughs> yeah, I like I actually like to stream enlightened one on too. Yeah, some flat front CRTs are SD. You're right. Sony made some really cool ones. I used to have one in college that was flat screen on the front and it worked great for PlayStation 2. Man, I played the heck out of PlayStation 2 in college on that thing. It was awesome. Uh, you did good Larson if you paid only $250, $200 Canadian cuz isn't that higher than US dollars? Thanks, Mike. Um, I've got, well, I've just got like, yeah, I've got, hey, Link, you're going to love it. The next video this week's the VHS video. I've already got that one done. So later on this week, there's going to be a video for um, PVM20, Ragman. You're lucky, man. I got that in the mail. So yes, thank you for bringing that up. We're going to try to do full restore, restoration on that. We'll break it down. I'll show you how to work on those again. And then we'll see if we can do some cap replacement on it. Uh, maybe get an idea for what would at least be a cap replacement on like power and uh, geometry caps. So you got a JVC flat screen SD CRT. That's pretty crazy. I've not seen one of those. I knew that like the Trinitron made the flat screen. I don't know how they. I don't know what the difference is in the technology between the flat screens. Yeah, well, there's still plenty more PVMs, thankfully, to go. But yeah, I've got like, um, I've been buying some like uh, cassette tape stuff. So I've got some cassette tapes and Walkmans that I want to do some work on. And uh, I've still got a, an old Linitron that's got something way wrong with it, which is like, so that's a wood grain 1987 sharp. It's called a Linitron. It's a wood grain knob turning television. You can see it. I don't know. Let's see if we can see, you see it up there uh, behind where the Pee Wee lunchbox is on top of next to that. I don't know if you can see that real well. There it is. There's the Linitron. Yeah, I haven't seen a mini disc in a long time. But yeah, that's the this one. This one needs to have some a video done on it sometime. It's got something wrong with it. It doesn't want to stay turned on. It just shuts itself off. It's got some kind of short in it. Well, everyone, I appreciate you uh, hanging out tonight, and uh, I'm pretty much gonna call that an evening. And um, again, thanks for joining me. And if you have any questions, I can be reached through the best two ways is to email me at my email address at link. No, it's not black and white. It's actually color. But uh, yeah, if you want to email me or Patreon, those are the two best ways. People try Facebook, but I don't know what the heck's going on with Facebook. They don't send me my messages half the time, and it's really not a good way to try to get in touch with me. I'm sorry. Uh, you can DM me on Instagram, though, Facebook. You can send me a message on Facebook, but that's the worst one. So everyone have a great night. Thanks for joining me. And I'll see you next time with some more retro content.